10 years for the cure, Ralphie. But for this... That's the chance I gotta take. No, I don't believe it. You will, Blinky. You will. Just wait for your ammunition, Blinky. Well, it wasn't, Miss Lay, and that's what counts. What time is it? Just about 12.30. Well, I can't wait for the police. I have an appointment date. Excuse me. And hello, and welcome to Connor and Crow's Petrifying Pictures Show. What an intro. I love, that was, that was pretty great with the old Superman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, technically in the public domain. Only that one. Uh, because it was used to sell stamps, which was apparently a thing during, I think it was World War One or Two that this came out to. Yeah. <laughs> this really is the only hurt. Superman we can actually show. And I will be really curious to see whether or not we get dinged for it. <laughs> yeah. I, hopefully not. But, well, I mean, that's, you know, that's something we should, we've we're, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, today because the movie we're going to show should also not be in the public domain whatsoever. But it is. Because it steals so much from everything else. Yeah. So, Teddy, we are not stealing things. No. The people who made this movie stole things. It's not on us, it's on them. And we're we're talking about it, so that's what makes it okay. Right. I still can't believe that we didn't get dinged for eating alive for that, for the clip. Oh, no, no. That's the one that never actually made it onto YouTube. Oh, yeah. Well, that explains it. Oh, that's really too bad. Yeah. Yeah, we never had the chance to get dinged for that one because it it just completely did not upload at all. Like That's nothing, really nothing whatsoever. Like, I feel like that was an especially good episode and like in that clip in that clip, yeah. like yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. yeah so uh, that's just one so of the awesome. hidden mystery episodes that yeah, we could talk about but nobody else can ever see because technically yeah. it didn't exist. So <laughs> there you go, folks. <laughs> It's in the. Uh, it's in the which, uh, uh, we are scene. going to be showing James Batman tonight. So yes, James <laughs> Batman. If you came here looking for Batman, you are going to see Batman. You've gone to the. Yes, you've yeah, come you to are the... the right place. It's just not the Batman or Batman Robin or Batman Returns. It's James Batman. Right place, wrong Batman. <clears throat> I actually went to school with a kid whose name has been Batman. Uh well it's Batman I guess technically uh, but uh that, that but count. still like his his dad was like obsessed with Batman and oh. um and his middle name was actually Bruce uh because of his dad's obsession with Batman and oh, yeah. yeah that's not gonna leave any lasting scars at all I'm sure he's fine right <laughs> <laughs> but so, so I'm so excited this, to watch this movie. movie oh sorry good. No, it's okay. I, I, I'm excited to watch this one, even though, uh, like I like we were talking about earlier, I totally, <laughs> it was totally wrong. Oh, yeah, you, information you plugged I... completely the wrong movie whatsoever. I mean, <laughs> Italian Spider Man is a really, it's a bad movie. It's it's not a good movie, but it's intentionally bad and it is awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it was also made in the early 2000s, so technically it's not public domain, so we can't really show that one. But it is. We good. can just. We just allude to it. You can allude to it. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it all kinds of places. I own a copy. Whether or not I should own a copy is debatable, but I do. I, money was paid for it. <laughs> well, it's kind of um, this is kind. It was kind of a situation like uh, Santa Claus conquers the Martians, where I swore up and down that um, uh, that what's his name was in it. That, uh, God, why can't I think of it right now? Oh, that one actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, you it had was, that uh, completely wrong. No, no. Yeah, uh, you were thinking uh, of a, you were thinking of that with Star Trek episode, not, not where he was like a weird. Yeah, he was like a. Yeah, weird he played alien. the weird bald child. Yeah, because at that it, point it he was, was uh, already going bald. <laughs> it was uh, Ron Howard's brother. Um, why can't I think of it right now? That's horrible. We'll, we'll come back to that during the break. Clint Howard, Clint Howard. Clint Howard, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. This movie should not exist. So it is the 
unholy combination of James Bond and Batman merged into one unholy abomination that is James <laughs> Batman. So what you've got here, the plot of this movie, and there is a plot, it's it's not good. But an evil organization called the Claw. So the Claw, like Inspector Gadget. You know. That's what I was going to say, right, so actually. Like, the Claw <laughs> threatens the world with nuclear annihilation. And only one man, one man, playing four roles. It's an Eddie Murphy type situation. Yeah, it's not done as well. So he is playing James Hika, who is also James, who is also James Batman. Not Batman, he's James Batman. James okay, Batman. So. Also Dolfo and James Sebot or Sabot. Huh. There you go. Bruce. My question is, are there any character, any other Batman characters in this? Oh yes. We'll get to those. There are. Okay. Okay. There are, there are both Batman villains and James Bond villains. Oh my god. And they're all done poorly. Why didn't they they should have like combined the villains together like they do. you know they do. They do. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah, all yeah. right. They all work for Claw, which is also the nation of Pulahan. Pulahan. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. There is a plot. It's not a very well thought out plot. Like most of the movies we watch. Yeah. I mean, like, that's technically, you funny. can watch that's it from the beginning to the end, and things happen in a sequence. Whether that sequence actually describes. Anything is that, that's debatable. <laughs> well, you know, this might be a gem, though. We we find a few of those sometimes. You know, I mean, not always. Sometimes it's all schlock, but you know, this is definitely sometimes a there's sometimes there's a you find some some uh, pearls in there. In I the look forward to you finding yeah. something worthwhile about this movie, other than the fact that it exists <laughs> and it's beautiful because it exists. What, so when did it come out? Time in which this was okay. Uh, 1966. Okay. All so right. there was a period in the 60s and the 70s where apparently the rest of the world just kind of went, screw you, America, and your copyrights. <laughs> we don't believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> and they just kind of wrong. did things. Yeah, Except so a lot of people were tonight, as as they and, are. Uh, in May, we're doing uh, Turkish Star Wars, which is even worse in its... <laughs> sheer disregard for copyright i mean this one they didn't blatantly rip film footage the way turkish star wars does but it does rip the soundtrack in various places poorly <laughs> oh my god i'm excited it's gonna be you know we, we should i don't remember if i've ever talked about this before but i think we should um uh, also look into trying to find the um the Indian version of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not found that one. I haven't managed to track that one down yet, but I have seen a uh, Bollywood version of Freddy Krueger. Oh man, I know it, it's on my list of things to acquire. Again, That's I don't know if we can technically show it, but again, yeah. the fact that it exists, I just want to see Freddy like burst into a song and dance while slashing yeah, people. Do, yeah, I don't, do I don't little. think that's much to ask. You know. <laughs> Just give me that one thing. Just, just one thing. Just give me one. I think That's the universe so has. Well, I'm excited about this. Uh, I think it'll be an interesting time. And I hope that... Um, I, I think we should kind of go on like a little... Well, with, well, with doing Turkish Star Wars and stuff, I think we, we definitely should uh, continue this like trend of... Um, of checking out lesser known and see the terrible things they've done. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, next on my list is a uh, Bruce Bruceploitation Bruce Bloitation movie. So I don't know if you're familiar with that genre, but it was basically after Bruce Lee died. Oh, they realized yeah. they don't have to pay him anymore, so they could just do whatever they wanted with his legacy, and they did. That's and there awful. are some really. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's some That's really so bad horrible. things. So so many terrible, terrible things. That are beautiful so are all and the movies like are they all like um <clears throat> do they just have like stolen clips from his other movies stolen clips of the movies people pretending to be him uh parts where they ripped the dialogue which is him going the 
So they yeah, ripped the yeah. noise he made because that was distinctive and yeah. just put it onto other characters. It's an entire genre within the like martial arts genre in itself. And again, it's wonderful and terrible. And it exists. Speaking of martial arts movies, I, wa I wonder how many, uh, I wonder like if there are any like really excellent classic, probably not, uh, kung fu movies that would be in public domain. I'm working on it. To check it out. I'm working on it. We'll have I one. really wish, I really, really wish that um, uh, Master of the Flying Guillotine was because that's one of my favorite. That's, one of my that's favorite. way too good for us. Yeah, it, it is. It is. By, I, you you got to lower that bar. Range. Lower, yeah. low, like limbo and just slide under. That, that's where we're at. That our, our, our home is under the limbo bar, kind of crawling on our back limply yeah flopping under the bar that down is, in the dirt and the grind that's where we, that, that's our that's our home turf. that's where we flourish yes that's, that's <laughs> the magical wonderful place we exist is belly crawling on our back whatever the equivalent of belly crawling is on your back that's us yeah like you're you're laying down and you're like moving your shoulder blades around to try and kind of flopping limply forward <laughs> yeah that's us yeah exactly that's what we and that's our that's speaking our of that that is basically the plot limply going forward and uh let's play this thing all right james batman let's roll james it batman Close to the Batman theme song, just vaguely, not quite there. It's just, just close. It reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons where they get wrapped into a cult and Homer singing that na 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 na, -na leader song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's close enough that you get the idea with hopefully not getting dinged for copyright infringement. Yeah. And also, yes, I forgot to mention his subtitles. The subtitles don't really help. I actually prefer subtitles because I can never hear anything anyway. Oh, I just meant it doesn't help with the plot at all. But you can read it. I'm 
You can tell he's the villain by the Fu Manchu mustache and tiny beard thing. Sinister neck beard. Sabi niya, 
Whoever, force, whoever doesn't comply will be forced to watch stock footage. <laughs> Unusual punishment, indeed. Yeah. Is that his hair or a hat? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a tiny hat. Yeah, but there's camera. Or that beard, oh my god. I know, that's how you tell he's a villain. You are a doppelganger. If you're in the Star Trek universe. Is that lightning? Shot from his finger. Oh man. Is that kind of a low pan thing going on? I know, the only problem is, you never see this guy after the scene. That's a real shame. Yeah, apparently he shows up to crash meetings. Ayoko, ayoko na na. Ayoko, ayoko. Kumusti ka? 
Old James himself. So I guess those would be bat olives. What is that symbol on his chest? It's obviously not a bee. I think it's supposed to be a stylized B, maybe, or possibly. I don't know. Some sort of weird symbol that's definitely not that. Did a snake just come out of it? What the hell is that? Oh, it was a hand? It was a hand, like the thing in Adam's family. Apparently, Batman <laughs> has one in his basement that makes him food and beverages. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's like whatever the, uh, I don't know, really know what Filipino um, you know al the Filipino alphabet looks like maybe it's in, uh, in Filipino I don't know uh, Tagalog and I don't know oh yeah Tagalog yeah 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 James Bond music, all right. Takes a really long time to get upstairs. Ito'y isang mapangarib na misyon. Pangarib? Ha? Ang mga nagbata, pangarib, nalulupit ang 
Uh, all right, now that we have both of the heroes on the screen, let's discuss this travesty. Sorry, my phone was. Anyway, yes. Um... Yeah, so those are both <laughs> the same actor put together on the same screen. What was the reasoning behind doing this? Like, what uh, is, I, don't I mean, know. it's so, so strange. at the time. So, you had the Adam West uh Batman series going, uh, mm -hmm. the yeah. James Bond series was also going on the screen. So, they just took two concepts and what there we go, let's do this thing. Yeah, so the Batman and Robin in this are obviously based off of the uh Port Ward Adam West TV series. Uh, their costumes are vaguely close, with the obvious exception of the bat symbol. Yeah. Uh, the James Bond is actually taken off of the, hang on, uh, Sean Connery version of the character. So uh, instead of having the suits that you see in most of the uh, James Bond series, it's just kind of rumpled guy <laughs> in a hideous, ill-fitting uh, checkered coat and cheap hat. Yeah, really it kind of gives him more of a like a, a Sherlock Holmes sort of almost look. Real, that's what I thought at first, first split second, and then I realized that wasn't the case. But yeah, I thought that's what I thought at first. Like it was like an old timey detective for a second. I was like, "What the hell?" It's, it's weird. Really based off of the Sean Connery version of 007. So there oh. you go. So uh, for those who are somehow not familiar with Batman. Uh, he was a uh, character created by Bob Kane and writer Bill Finger for DC Comics. Uh, he debuted in the comic uh, Detective Comics on March 30, 1939. His alter ego was Bruce Wayne, the millionaire uh, philanthropist playboy who witnessed his parents' murder as a child and never recovered. And his way of working through the pain was to dress up like a giant bat and beat the crap out of villains. So there you go. Who was your favorite Batman? I kind of like the Michael Keaton Batman, honestly. Michael Keaton is, yeah, my favorite Batman for sure. Like, I, I think the kind of seriousness while retaining a little bit of campiness. So they didn't take it quite as, you know, grim and dark and I'm Batman. Yeah. And the Martha, most recent one, did I didn't thing? hate it. I mean, I thought, oh, what's his name? Bob Patterson? Robert Pat Robert Patterson. Robert Patterson. I thought he played an okay Batman, but his Bruce Wayne was just kind of like, all right, dude, you need something between the two so people can tell the difference. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm Batman. I'm also, I'm Bruce Wayne. Like, dude, yeah. Dude. But yeah, uh, I mean, uh, if we put the two together, I can, I can see you. you right. Know. I don't have a problem. I think I don't have a problem with him being Batman as much as no, like. I didn't hate the movie. I didn't hate it at all. Yeah. I, I think that there are things like, like I, I ranted about before, <clears throat> there are certain things that I think, like, I guess in my, it's just, they're precious to me. So I'm like, I don't like people, you know, like, the whole thing with, like, Penguin. Like, I I realized that, really, Tim Burton's Penguin was a deviation. I mean, it, was mostly, it was close to the uh, the young Batman TV series. Uh, yeah. So he, he was kind of like the Penguin in that. So he wasn't, Oswald Cosmopod wasn't like hideously deformed or whatever. He just got the yeah. moniker penguin because he walked funny. Right. And that seemed kind of what they were going for with this was a right. continuation of that like kind of. Or sort of. Right. Which he know. was, but yeah, he definitely wasn't as campy as the Adam West penguin or yeah. the uh, Michael Keaton or Dane version. DeVito. Yeah. Which is he, my he favorite. Not... App, which is yeah. Batman Returns is mm -hmm. my like absolute favorite it's my absolute favorite batman movie and and like every time i see another batman movie i'm like huh i wonder if this will to me like if it will you know if it'll measure well, up and no yeah and nothing else does like i remember being a kid when um batman returns came out and i had like all the action figures and stuff and i loved it and and the funny thing is that Halloween that that came out, it was like 90, 93 or something like that. Uh, 92 or 93, I think. Or maybe 94. Anyway, early 90s. I, I, <laughs> I love the movie so much. I was so obsessed with it. I wasn't Batman for Halloween. I wasn't the Penguin for Halloween. I was one of the Penguins with a rocket launcher on its back for Halloween. <laughs> 
That was and that wasn't a homemade costume. That was actually a costume that was sold at like Walmart or wherever. But that's such a weird, you know, it's so strange. It's so strange. I've never seen another one since. Like I've never even on like eBay or anything. I'm guessing I've never somebody seen... had like a bunch of surplus penguin costumes and they were like, strap a cardboard <laughs> tube on their back and repurpose it. Yeah, there, you there go. we go. We like double the price and everybody's happy. <laughs> If there's footage of that somewhere, that'd be freaking fantastic. I know I'm gonna try and find I'm gonna try and see if like at my mom's house if she has a picture of of us from that Halloween, if you know, me as the pe- as the bang with a rocket launcher on his back. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's so just that that uh, one. James Bond was a character created by writer Ian Fleming for a series of novels and short story collections, uh focusing on the exploits of a fictional British Secret Service agent. Code number 007. Uh, the films were, uh, the films actually was one of the longest continually running series and have grossed over $7.4 billion in total, making it the fifth highest grossing film series to date. Jeez. Who's your favorite James Bond? I'm not really into them. I'm, honestly, me neither. Not weird enough for me. I like the idea. But after a while, I was like, all right, dude, we get it. You're like an indestructible British guy. I mean, yeah. it's cool and all, but it's not weird enough for my tastes. It's actually, they're too well okay. done to fit my, like, crap meter is what it comes down to. If they had more, like, weirdo enemies like Jaws, you know, uh, the guy with the metal teeth. Oh, that's a, if yeah, they had, I mean, like, more things like that, I, I would be into it. One day, if I lose all my teeth, I am totally getting metal teeth. I, mean, I don't mean metal. like metal coated to look like teeth. Right. I mean, I want shiny okay. metal teeth that I can yes. like bite through bars and stuff with. Absolutely. Absolutely. On my list of that things. Would be, for sure. That would be, I mean, wh- like, why not? What do you, what do you, you know, it, it's I a win win situation. Metal teeth would be fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. I wonder how much they made cost. adamantium by then. It'd be fantastic. Oh, man. That'd be pretty wild. I'm the Wolverine. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be hard to like go anywhere though on like if you went to went to like an airport or anything, that would be unless you're just well, like yeah, oh, you just go. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Iron I just, jaws. Or biting, yeah, I would just go around biting everything. Yeah. I mean, actually maybe you should start doing that now so then you could damage your teeth enough where they could be replaced with metal teeth. You'd have an excuse. No idea. But that's such a weird. That's like, that's such a like a funny idea for a villain. They're like, I don't know, just give this guy metal teeth and he just you know bite stuff. Well, he, he like, came out of the sort of pulp fiction, and I don't mean pulp fiction like the you know Tarantino, Tarantino. movie. I mean pulp yeah. writing. It was the right over the top adventure kind of series. So that's what the early James Bond kind of sort of novels were rooted in. So you had the guy with the yeah. metal jaws. You had the guy who could fling his hat. It's the same thing as like the uh, the Rocketeer. It was a dude with a thing on his back. It was that or pulp. like Dick Tracy with like this weird like Div- you know. yeah Dick Tracy with his weird villains. The uh, guy with the weird blocky face and all those blockhead like, or like you know, wrist radios <laughs> and everything they thought the future would be. That's yeah, and the weird gadgets. That's where James Bond is rooted in. So his villains do make sense. But now yeah. that it's also flashy and perfect looking, and I don't know, I just, it's not my thing. Austin Powers just kind of had more fun with it, you know, and like took it in a different direction. As Austin, see, that's the thing. Like, I was never into James Bond movies, but I, when I was a kid, I liked Austin Powers because it was light heart. It was light and it was funny and it was, you know, not, I don't know. It, it's, so, there's certain things that like, they're less entertaining if you take them too seriously. And, and and I think that's what happens sometimes with Batman is is sometimes different people's versions of it, they take it to such a level that it makes it not fun. And I'm not saying that like, you know, I, don't get me wrong, I like gritty things sometimes or grim dark things sometimes, but at the end of the day, you're you're making a movie about a man, a grown man who dresses up like a bat. And I say that as a grown man who dresses up like a bird, you know, <laughs> so. I can't imagine a grim, dark version of my life where I'm just going around 
I'm talking like this and I'm dressed and I, you know, and I got a beak on my head and everything. And, I want you to know, see that, I... <laughs> <laughs> and actually there's a school of thought that Austin Powers, the movies have mm -hmm. influenced modern cinema for like everything after they came out. My supervisor, oh, teach, there's a video on YouTube that's apparently goes into great detail about this. And my supervisor keeps telling me I need to watch that. So I need Ooh. to watch that. Yeah. yeah. So apparently Send that to me or something. I, meta I commentary on the movie influenced every movie that came after. I think it's a bit of a stretch, but apparently somebody put the work into proving it. So that's yeah, a thing. Yeah, I mean, they might, have, they might make some good points. They might. And speaking of things that don't make good points, let's roll the film. Check out the fins on this Batmobile. It's fancy. Oh, they didn't have the money to put the lifts in. They spent it too much on his cape. It's a nice cape. Horizontal stripes are slimming. <laughs> And there you go, Mace Hand. <laughs> Who is Mace Hand supposed to be based on? It's supposed to be a James Bond villain, I guess. <laughs> you don't remember the Mace Hand? Yeah. He's laughing like Joker. Yeah. Is Joker in this? No. Oh. I love those sound effects. I am slightly disappointed that they don't have the cartoon. Pow! Bam! Yeah, this! Wham! You could kind of envision it when they punch people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also in Batman and the Batman and Robin and this are brothers, which is why they tease each other so much. Oh. I thought it was just kind of a, you know, sort of a significant other situation. I can see how you would think that.
Be careful indeed. One problem the Adam West Batman never had is not that I ever called. <laughs> Prepare for the Bat Moon! <laughs> <laughs> I guess he had whitey tidies on. <laughs> and it looks like he just face. kind of fell like six feet. <clears throat> and he slapped him in the face when he pulled his pants down. Another Adams family around here. Yeah. Back to violence, which puts it in, you know, line with American expectations.
Did he punch her in the crotch? That's what I was just getting ready to ask. Oh. <laughs> Alright, dude. Hey, Batman's a dirty fighter. Oh, this is James Seabot. Oh, my mistake. Completely different people. <laughs> and now for some gratuitous cleavage. Nobody is staring at it at all. Except that guy. <laughs> I'm getting some twisted nerve vibes from that whistling in the background. Yeah. Well, the lady Gervis. Look at the light. Look. Look at the light! The light compels you! Who's this pal buddy? Yeah.
Saan man kayo naroon? Ay magagawa ko. Ganyan naman niya kayo. Speaking of Penguin, all the way to the far right. Who's the woman spinning that chain around or whatever it was? This woman? No, there was a woman by the penguin who was like spinning a chain or something around. Oh, uh, generic henchman. Oh, see her on the right? Yeah, generic henchman. Ah. Oh. But here we have Black Rose, which is supposed to be a fair game. With the one with the nunchucks or single nunchuck? What's what's single for nunchucks? Nunchuck? Anyway, I have nunchuck, no idea. Nunchuck. Yeah, I guess nunchuck. Nunchuck you? Know, nunchuck, otherwise. I don't know Batman? Batman? Batman. And look, it's the Adam West and Burt Ward Batman. <laughs> How'd they get away with that? Uh, how did they get away with any of this? Yeah, good point. Yeah. 
hindi naman yata tama yung ginagawa mo. Dapat natin pagbigyan ako, gusto ng kapatid. Hindi ako maaaring makapayag pa pa. Bakit pa niyo susundin ang kalukuan ng bata niya? At kung yan ay masabi, alam ba ninyo kung sino sisisihin ang lipunan? Tayo! Kung pagka tayo nakatatanda. Kung ang kinakailangan, tayo ang matusunod. Tayo ang magtuturo sa kanya. Sa ayaw na sa gusto niya, susunod siya sa atin. Ayaw ko siya bata. Ang gusto ko'y si Dolfo. Si Dolfo pa pa, maluwa na ba? Dolfo, ito ka lang. Ako ka. Ha? Si Dolfo? Kelly? Huwag ko mabigat ko, Kelly. Dolfo ka niya. Kita mo na, Kelly? Bagay na bagay din dalawa, hindi ba? He's so goofy. He's almost more like, uh, I don't know, Mr. Bean or like, um, yeah. I don't know, Pee Wee Herman or something. Oh, he's just very goofy. And, <laughs> it's, an well, it's a hallmark of these sort of um, <laughs> foreign exploitation films. So, well, actually, let's talk about that. Uh, one of the hallmarks of the of the sort of exploitation films is uh, that they're usually on a really really limited budget. Yeah, they deliberately steal elements from other movies, uh, parts of the film, the soundtrack, whatever. And there's usually an added comedy element. So that's this one is a fairly good example of that sort of genre, I guess. If it's a sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's enough Filipino ones to call it a genre amongst to itself, but the sort of copyright stealing infringing stuff that's this is one of those right well i mean you know it's kind of like a lot of uh it reminds me of very much of like different parody movies that like came out in the the 90s here like with you know like hot shots and that type of thing like you know just overly goofy like campy um or like i remember this movie it came out probably like the tail end of the 90s called Mafia that was like very similar to that. Well, um, sort of, uh, it was Airplane and then you had the scary yeah, movie yeah. and you had all those kind of movies. And yeah, it's very much one of those kind of things. It's it's a parody. So I guess I guess that's what it would be is a parody. And yeah, it's right. got the limited budget, terrible special effects. You can basically tell who the characters are supposed to be, but mm. it's mostly funny. And that's what right. this is. Um, and Dolfo uh, was supposed to be funny. Uh, Rodolfo Vera Quizon, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, uh, billed as Dolphy. So that's the character, that's the actor. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that was actually kind of cool. So while this film was in theaters, Dolphy had a gig as an audience warm up for the Beatles. So there you go. Huh. Yeah, so, so he's your uh, comedian your... and he did a comedy movie. It, it makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, I, yeah. you know, I, I, himself in a parody movie is what it comes down to, I guess. Yeah. A parody yeah. of a parody. Parody of a parody of a parody. Yeah. Infinite loop of Dolfo. And like I mentioned before, he's doing like very much like an Eddie Murphy type. But, but I guess he did this before Eddie Murphy, so maybe Eddie Murphy was more taking a, a page from his book, I guess. Yeah, let's go with that. As, as if Eddie Murphy has ever seen this movie. You know? Nobody's seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I definitely see what you mean. Also, speaking of the Philippines, have you ever had... Uh, have you ever eaten at Jollibee's? No, I don't know what that is. Apparently, it's a chain uh, that's in, I mean, it's in America, but it's in, like, only, I don't know exactly. I know I know that there's one in Maui. I know that much. But I guess it's, okay. like, a, it's actually, like, a fried chicken chain, but it's, like, they have Filipino food. And I guess Jollibee is, is like, very big in the Philippines. Okay. And they have fried chicken. They have, uh, it's, like, fried chicken rice. They have spaghetti, because spaghetti, for some reason, is, like, very big in the Philippines. But I guess their spaghetti is oh. typically sweeter. Um, there's like a lot of, lot of sugar, I guess, in the, in the sauce. Uh, and I've never eaten there. Um, but the next time, because I don't know where the closest one is, I have no idea, 
I just know that they're supposed to be in America. They're, they're, you know, they're, I mean, they're, you know, all over the world, but right. there's, there's supposedly some in America besides Maui. Um, but the next time I go to Maui, I'm going to go to Jollibee's just because I, I watched some videos of people like just trying out different things and uh, from there and talking about how good it was, but just, it's very odd to me that fried chicken and, and spaghetti are and sweet uh, spaghetti. Sweet spaghetti are really big in Philippines. Huh. Yeah. Probably some kind of weird American influence there. Probably. But so far, oh, okay, so at this point in the movie, we've seen both of the main characters, uh, and we've also seen several parody villains. So again, the dude with the base hand. I'm assuming that's supposed to be a parody of a James Bond villain. I uh, guess they in said black and white, maybe the metal teeth wouldn't show up, so they did metal hand. I don't know. Could be. Uh, there's the parody of the penguin. We've seen that. Right. Uh, we've black seen a parody bone. of Catwoman, who, oddly enough, is the sort of love interest older sister who's, we, who we just saw talk about, you know, values and all the things you're supposed to respect and family and da-da-da-da-da, while right. working for a villain who's looking to conquer the world. Yeah. Kind of an interesting disconnect there. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, I I think it's interesting that they. Well, I guess penguin is such a, like um, I mean the word penguin is not copywritten, so that's why they just went ahead and kept the name. But like for Catwoman, I guess. Suit. But if you're already but if you're already using if you're already using Batman, why would you not just go ahead and use Catwoman? You know, steal all the other villains. Yeah, I'm assuming right. they spent too much money on the, you know, putting the fins on the Batmobile. You yeah. Know? But that, that's Actually. where their budget is blown. And then repairs for all the times that it bottomed out when they were driving around to escape yeah. from the gangsters. Yeah. Oh, and you also had Drago, who I don't know if yeah. he's supposed to be the big bad or what, but he's the guy with the giant weird hand behind him. That's his shtick. I was kind of thinking sort of that he was supposed to be like Raja Raja Ghoul at first, like that type of oh. character, but maybe not. I mean, I don't remember Raja Ghoul having a giant hand thing, but maybe yeah. that's well, what the name is Lazarus. supposed to be. Yeah, why not? Is, doesn't he have like a, what, isn't there some sort of, what's the symbol for like the Lazarus pit and all that? Like, doesn't he have some kind of like weird, aren't there like some kind of weird runes or something? I don't know. We'll have to look into it more. Oh, um, but, you know, maybe I, for some reason, I keep thinking there's like a hand or something, but maybe not. I don't know. I thought it was weird. I think it's weird that there are two, like, two allusions to um, to the Adams family in this movie. Very odd. Very odd. But then again, yeah. if you think about it, parody movies when we were younger, you know, um, they often even if they if if they uh mentioned something or or alluded to something that wasn't from that genre that was pretty commonplace you know yeah, very much so right. i mean maybe that maybe it's just because you know the adams family tv show was on at that time also it would have so, been it would have been around the same time you know. period, so yeah it, it does make so, sense yeah, it's, it's just kind of a weird sense. thing to go i know what that is yeah. we're gonna put we're gonna put thing in that machine that's gonna come out and then we're like we're gonna have him put a light bulb in his mouth and it's gonna light up yeah thing that delivers him bananas because there yeah. you go batman likes his potassium i don't know you gotta have your potassium man yeah good That's for nice. the bananas are good for your blood pressure yeah you know but yeah that's all i've got as far as the plot i mean perfect what you see is what you've got at this point evil organization parody figures and lots of talk of family values yeah, that's and I, I can't believe he, I can't believe he punched her in the vagina. I can't believe that. That's I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he did. I mean, that's right. what it looked I, like. I mean, you saw it too, so yeah. I well, wasn't the only time, one thinking that. I was like, wait, did he punch her in the thigh? I'm like, no, no, he I'm just he went sure. for her. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> that type of movie. Yeah, for gadgets, but they'd give him some moves. Yeah. He's a combat pragmatist. I mean, he just, you know, he does whatever he has to do. It definitely halted the situation, so... It's true. Yeah. As it, as it would, you know, as I mean... <laughs> truth in television, I guess. Yeah. 
All right. But anyway, I think we're pretty close to the exciting conclusion of what this is. And anything could happen at this point. I mean, anything could happen, including a real wild card of a movie. Yeah, including stuff, an explanation <laughs> for it, things. Anyway, let's find out. <laughs> Maybe more gratuitous cleavage shots. You never know. I don't think so. <laughs> there we go. I know. <laughs> I might as well. I'm confused. Oh man. Mm. 
Got some moves, I got that thing. I like to do when I'm almost been kidnapped, go to the beach. Yeah, take your mind off the situation. Yeah, yeah you know? in the background. Yeah, there's exactly no point to the scene whatsoever. It's that weird twisted nerve style. Penguin watches like a creep. He's twitching like he's covered in like bed mites or something. A giant windsaw. What was with her hand? What was that about? underwear. Holy underwear, Batman! <laughs> they stole his granny panties and they ran away. Disguise. A solid snake out of there. Like from Metal Gear Solid with a cardboard box. Except it's a giant leaf. Nothing to see here, this is a giant crawling paw.
and just my mom. Will you forbid about that? And now please let the crew look. Oh no, where's that centipede going? Ugh. Oh god. Well, he ain't wearing pants. So. That is the facial expression of a man with a centipede up his covers. Milk, milk, lemonade. Doing the walk of shame. Oh, man. That would be a really horrible place to have a centipede. Oh, yeah. And he's going to the hospital. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bond, this is the third time this week you've had to remove a centipede from your ass. I'm just saying. Once could happen, twice is a coincidence, three times. That's a personal choice. It's just this guy, you know, how this guy party. A little bit of venom at the end of really just gets him going. Hello?
Stormtroopers are bad stormtroopers from the dumpster actually hitting their Stormtroopers in hoods and deep plunging necklines and miniskirts. Is that a bullseye on their forehead? For a second, I thought it was uh, like uh, a pentagram, but I, I don't think it actually. I can't really tell what it is. ass is right on the camera. Yeah. Like right there.
See, it's just a whole lot of people wandering around the out. Yeah, they're not the most efficient evil organization. And now they steal Batman's car. I guess he just left the keys in there. Not, not, very, uh, not a very good idea on their part. No. I mean, that's just being courteous. Oh, and you have to give up your secret plan. All right. Monologuing is important. I met Will Defoe in the White House now saying, Why did you spill your beans? And it was the chairman all along. God. Apparently kidnapped his own daughter and then himself in order to further his evil plans. The double cross nobody expected. Double double cross. But did they remember my birthday last year? No, those jerks. See, it's the little things, you know. The really no, bad. No respect, no. See, no respect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little Rodney Dangerfield in there. No respect at all. No respect at all. Thank you. 
It's been cruel to all of us, man. Get over it. Nobody loves me. I'm going to destroy the world. Ah, we've seen that before. He's got a helmet on. Bless his heart. Mace just had something up his sleeve. Literally. If I don't know. Before I kill you, Mr. Bond. I thought that no. was but I guess no, not. No, no, no. Giant metal. Yeah. What's the point in having a mace for a hand if you're not going to bludgeon someone to death with it in the movie? Again? He doesn't, though. They took my hand and replaced it with a metal stump. My squeezing arm. I love that Robbins had the same look on his face the entire time. He's just kind of staring off. I don't think he can see very well through the mask. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what's going on here. He's like, what's going on? Describe it to me. And now the secret, secret agent. <laughs> Looks kind of like Elvis. <laughs> The devil in disguise. Meow. Yeah. And this chick in the sweatpants. You know, I, don't know that is. I love how she just kind of ran out. Oh, she's like, on their side. Kind of ran out like she didn't know. Is it the lady that was lost in the house earlier? I think. So. I think that was the. I think she's the one with the nun junk, the single one. Oh. Nobody will know it's me. We all know so you're siding with evil Colonel Sanders. <laughs> he does. He does look like evil Colonel Sanders. The, is that the same guy that played the like uh, guy with the electric powers earlier? No, we never saw that character ever again. No, I mean, is it the same actor? Because they have similar oh, faces. Maybe. Similar beard. Like not the mustache. He obviously doesn't have a mustache.
Get over here. Meow. Choke him with his own. Okay. While biting it, dude. Look he was trying to bite his hand. I didn't see him. It's nice to see Penguin in an actual fight scene, because I feel like you very rarely ever see Penguin fight anybody in any of the Batman movies, you know? This is true. Gonna stab you with my fingers. I do have to say, I feel like the martial arts in this movie is pretty, pretty decent. I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah, the fight scenes aren't bad, actually. They're a little bit better than power. Well, maybe not, but uh, at least not power. Yeah, I mean they don't have all the lasers and things like like power rangers. Unfortunately, no. and they don't form together to like form a giant Batman villain, which would have been cool. They really should have. Had that. I mean, it was a waste of time. Trying to get him with the mace fist, but it just didn't quite work. His helmet looks kind of like a brass colander because it'll take a bunch of holes in the top of it. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Metal case, see? Hard. I didn't expect that.
a weird sound effect for this one. Smash, smash. That little kick don't do today. <laughs> Did Robin just gun somebody down? Wow. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, go play but, Wonder. It's a bit yeah, it's pretty really harsh. I'm not afraid to use a gun. I mean, she died from invisible bullets, but you know. Yeah. He's like, I should kill people more often. <laughs> he just shot her again. I think so. Get a little excited. Very slowly approaches the lever. All right, evil Colonel Sanders, we don't have all night. Throws him in his tracks. Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> I know you can't do it, Papa. I know you, Papa. <laughs> You have a heart of gold! You love humanity! <laughs> and you're a god fearing man! Isn't that so, Papa? I think I, I can't decide if this would make it better if it were a musical or if it would make it worse. I mean, if it's somebody other than me singing, it might be better. <laughs> Prepare to give him the finger. <laughs> I, thought, I thought at first he was going to make all the fingers go down. Mm-hmm. 
And he gets with the elbow oh. twist. Punch to the face. Punch to the knees. Shoulder chop. Everybody in this movie knows how to fight. Which I, I, I kind of want to see um, you know, Colonel Sanders get to a fight with somebody. That would be fantastic. What just happened? Melting! Melting! Oh, what a world! What a world! Why, what a world. why did that happen? Oh, uh, he turned the hand on. I mean, oh, he can only attack. Okay. I guess that happens. Yeah, he so can only attack two that places that spot on the door and a spot on the wall. Otherwise, it was useless. <laughs> as long as you're in one of those places, you know. He's with Satan. He's with Satan! <laughs> I'm going to start saying that whenever someone dies. He's with Satan now. It's okay, son. He's with Satan now. <laughs> He's in the loving embrace of Satan. Slow motion hug. Fake out. Oh. Sucks to suck. Some space. Just like the leech. Yes, I've been broken hearted. She's like, piss off. Behold the power of our stock footage. <laughs> They'll probably duck, you know. I mean, there's gonna be debris flying all over the place. <laughs> He's with Satan now. He's with Satan now. It's okay, dear. He died doing what he loved, committing suicide. That woman. Oh, I didn't realize. That. I thought it was just. I thought it was just Batman. Is it is it is it an old lady? What kind of what kind of animals is that? Rude. Yeah. And there you have it. Man. That was a journey, I gotta say. I know, right? Twists and turns and... No, there really wasn't. Sorry.
evil Colonel Sanders, again, sets up the whole thing, brings in somebody to like intimidate the United Nations Council, whatever it is. Yeah. And then kidnaps his daughter and then himself in order to further his own evil designs on conquering the world because people didn't give him any respect. You know, there are other ways of dealing with that. He could have gone to therapy and hashed out all of his issues, you know. But see, the real problem is all the money he had at his disposal. I think, you know, when people are super wealthy, they're out of touch with, with uh, you know, reality. They think they're drunk with so power. He was upset about not having enough money, but he did have enough money to hire all those goons, build a exactly. giant hand thing, get exactly. some kind of weird nuclear device. I mean, I can't do that on my salary, so clearly he was doing okay. I'm just saying, you know. Right. I, well, it's one of those things where, like, the uber wealthy are like, oh, I'm so broke. But then they, you know, own all these properties and, you know, they... And build giant death laser hands. Exactly. Exactly. As they do. Everybody knows We're that. Yeah. We're out of touch. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, though. It was very wacky, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, definitely a parody movie that parodied many things very badly. I don't think I've ever really seen a parody movie from that time period before. Uh, no, this would be the earliest one that I know of. I mean, I'm sure there are other ones, clearly, but sure. yeah. Because like, whenever, like, um, I don't know, would you consider, like, the Pink Panther movies to be kind of parody, sort of? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, they were yeah, definitely parodying the spy genre. Yeah. And spy, so, yeah. Very much so. Which was probably, but that was probably, like, the 70s, right? Or maybe late 60s, uh, early 70s. Well, that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of these sort of things were 60s, 70s. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was, uh, it, it was, it's very funny because there were so many aspects. Like, it, they're really just those characters by name. There wasn't really a lot that they did that was very reminiscent of anything that Batman really does. I mean, obviously, he fights crime and he has like some, you know, he has like a, a laboratory, but like, there was and no he had a utility was, belt full of olives. Yeah. In case he needs a snack, you know. Important. Uh, yeah, it was very, it was very wacky and 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 ridiculous. But you know, like we pointed out, the fight scenes were actually not bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, the uh, martial arts and whatnot were not bad. I mean, you couldn't obviously see that it was like punch and then they pull it. You know, it right, looked yeah. like they actually had some training, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it was a little bit more than like just the hammer fist type. Thing, you know that you yeah, see a it was lot like of the Star Trek. Oh, you know they actually, <laughs> yeah, they actually got in there. Like Shatner fighting the lizard man. Yeah, yeah. that it, it was. It was better than that at least. So yeah, it, it was that. better quality than that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, but I, I think that that's. It's. Uh, I think it, it should be sort of the beginning of a trend for us to watch, you know, different foreign movies like this of this quality. Oh, very much so. I'm really excited about Turkish Star Wars. That's going to be a blast. Oh, Turkish Star Wars. It is such a terrible movie. That'll be so much fun to watch. <laughs> what's the date for that? Are we going to do it? Uh, what, what's the... Did, you had a date in mind, didn't you? Uh, it's May 21st, I believe. May 21st. So it's like the third week of May. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that'll be fun. And, and you know, and I'll be... I'll try to be a little bit better about putting stuff out or, you know, putting stuff out about it. Uh, for this one, I just lost track of time completely. And then when I did try to upload the video, it didn't upload. So, and then talk uh, about a different movie altogether. And I talked so, about a completely different movie that we didn't even, that, that actually doesn't even exist. It doesn't exist, but I, I want it to exist. It should exist. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. So, so that'll be fun. Turkish Star Wars. If, I wish yeah. we had enough time. I wish we would have had enough time to do. Well, wait. What what day is the fourth this week? If we could have done on May fourth, that would have been great. But oh, that would have been fantastic. But we don't. But like you know, that's I don't even know what day of the week that is. And uh, it's a Wednesday. Obviously, and, we'll sort of know this now. Yeah, yeah. It's it would have been unrealistic. But the entire month of May will have Star Wars ish, not Star Wars, but Star Wars adjacent things. Yeah. At the library, so Star Wars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which, you know, to go off on a very mild tangent, did you see that, uh, speaking of space-faring uh, and science fiction type 
uh, stuff. Did you see that Wizards of the Coast is um, releasing oh, spells? Yeah. Oh, uh, spell Jeffrey. Yeah, yeah. I've been waiting on that, so I don't know. It could be cool. I think so, too. I think it yeah. could be exciting. But yeah, that's just a very small aside. I didn't want to go off on a whole thing about that. because we could. I'm sure we could probably talk about that oh, for forever. But... Geek it off on like RPGs? Yeah, that's a whole yeah, different yeah. thing. That's a whole that different show. A different video altogether yeah. that we could we should do. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, no, for, uh, but this, this, uh, this genre of, of movie is kind of hard to describe. It's obviously a comedy parody movie, but like, I don't know. It, it, it's cry. It's like a it's superhero slash spy. It falls but like, into kind of the general exploitation sort of genre. It's and that it, um, exaggerates certain elements of a definite thing that they're trying to do. Right. Um, but I don't know enough Filipino movies in and of itself to say that it's a specific thing all to itself. But it's definitely right. kind of an exploitation film. It's definitely a parody. And it's definitely a parody of uh, various superhero and spy things. And then a little bit of Adam's Family, because why not? Yeah, tossed in. A sprinkle of Adam's Family. Um, it reminds me a little bit of, um, as far as like spoofing the spy genre, uh, have you ever seen Wang Wang or heard of Wang Wang, who's also from the Philippines? He, he was a little person who was also a martial artist. And he was like one of the smallest little people who was still extremely like mobile. Like you can watch, um, you can, you can find, let's see, your sock for your size only is one where it's just about, you know, the whole, the whole thing is, you know about him being small of course but like he but he kills people and he beats the crap out of people and you should I definitely check it out is. but yeah. uh, but there's like a definitely definitely like a very similar style of humor in this um and he has like a little he has like all kinds of gadgets like james bond uh he has like he actually has a hat that he can throw that has a blade and it sticks people in the neck and he has a jet pack he uh he's got all kinds of stuff and he he just goes around he's got a bowl cut and he still ro he romances women even though he's two foot nine or something like that. Like it, it's uh, pretty good. That sounds awesome. Oh yeah, I'm gonna check. And it, that. it's funny though because at the end of of one of his movies, he finds out that the big bad is actually just another little person. Oh. <laughs> and and they get into this big this big you know fight at the end that's pretty great. But uh, but yeah, that's it puts me in the in the mind of that and that's unfortunately the only other filipino movie i think i've ever seen yeah, so i, I want to finish that so i want to i want to get into i want to check out some more filipino cinema i think definitely like i said this can't be the only example of stuff out there so because yeah. i know with turkish movies there's like an entire genre devoted to that so i'd be curious to look into whether or not the filipino cinema kind of had the same thing and i will yeah. definitely look into that yeah for sure for sure well, any other, uh, anything else that we want to add at the... You need to come up with a thing. So how are we ending this this time? Yeah. Well, I, I thought about that. And I think a little bit of like wisdom that you can kind of squeeze out of this movie is it doesn't matter if you are an oversexed spy, uh, if you are a cape-wearing uh, vigilante, no one has a contingency plan for a centipede crawling up your anus. And that you know. is where we will leave it, folks. Beware of your anus when it comes to centipedes. Exactly. All right, folks, <laughs> we will see you again anytime you hit play on YouTube. Yeah. Yep, yep. Same same bird time, same bird same bat time. Well, the, same bird time, yes. Yeah. Same bird time, same YouTube channel. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and good night, folks. One more time. Is this on? The, the red light's on. That means it's on, right? And this is on. Okay. A one, and two, and three. Counter man, counter man, does wear a counter can. See him fly through the sky, where he lands, evil dies. Hell yeah! Here comes counter man. Is he a man or a bird? He's definitely a giant nerd. Can snakes hear him speak? Can he shoot lasers from his beak? Hell yeah! Here comes Gunner Man. 
from his secret con or cave. Terrible movies will he brave. He's gonna say lots of words. He's going as man just up like a bird. Hell yeah! Here comes Connor Man. You know what I heard? Connor once punched a man so hard he flew back in time so he could learn the error of his ways. And he can uh, fart tornadoes. That's right. Connor once watched the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Yeah, you know the director's streaming one? And he liked it. Yeah, that's this kind of guy he is. And, uh, hell yeah! Here comes the Connor Man. <coughs> 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 that's it. You can